us today. So we're here for a few minutes. So you want a child's pose that is nice and light. The knees are as wide as it's comfortable. And let these hips sink as far back as you can onto those heels, finding length through the spine. Lay your forward and rest on the mat. Begin to lengthen every inhale and every exhale. Bringing awareness to your core. Even in child pose, we're resting, but we're still active. Feel your core move as you inhale deep into the belly. And then let your body soften onto the mat. Transitioning into our practice today. So maybe we take a moment and run through our little list of to-dos. What are we going to do after? What are we going to do this week, this weekend? How was our list? How was our morning? How was our week then? All those things, those are basic thoughts. Invite them in for a moment. You already know all this stuff. You already know all the things you have to do. And then let them come out the top of your head. If you like a visual, you can imagine your head kind of filling up with the glowing energy, pushing all those thoughts up and away out of the crown until you find a presence, a non-thinking being, welcoming yourself to this yoga practice. Letting yourself just be for the next 60 minutes, full presence, awareness in our bodies. Deep breathing, still. Warrior breath, Ujjayi breath. So try to make that ocean, ocean sound. Constricted throat, close the lips. Stick with this breath for practice. And then we'll walk our hands over to the right. Reach through the left fingertips, send the weight back into the left hip, side body opener. Sticking with that child's pose position. Sink the weight back into the hip a little more, reach with, further with the left fingertips. We'll come through center with both hands. Take them over to the left, all the way off the mat. Reach with those right fingertips. Feel the shoulder opening, finding space. Sink the weight back into the right hip. Big breathing here. Opening this side body. It might be the first time today where we're really breathing into the circuit. Opening that. And then we'll come through center, push up. We're gonna sit on the shins, so bring the inner thighs together. And now we're gonna bring our hands behind us, fingers face forward. On an inhale, lift the hips, open that heart space, let the head fall back. And then it's gonna drop the hips back down towards the heels. Let's lean forward, pop up onto the toes. We're gonna open up the bottom of the feet. So as you move the weight back, this will be the most intense part of the pose. You can come out of it at any time. But open up the bottom of the feet, get into all 10 toes. Sit up nice and tall, maybe stretch the wrists. There's a wrist stretch you like. I like to press the back of the palms together. All right, we'll release out of that and then come just to sitting on our sit bones. So release the legs, cross leg in position. Sit up nice and tall, hands on the knees and we'll breathe into the neck. So let the head be heavy, full neck circles here. Might be nice to close the eyes, so it's choice. Just noticing what you're noticing. 
Notice in different areas of the neck, one at a time. Still using that Ujjayi breath, of course, still engaged. So you go around to pull it in and out. Back to center with a nice tall spine. We're going to take our right hand down over to the right and then just reach up with the left fingertips so it's a side body stretch. Then we're going to move back and forth going from left to right at your own pace. So use the inhales to lengthen up. And you can take this as far down as you want, maybe going to the forearm, using your own pace, your own breath. You don't have to follow anyone else's breath. Keep both sit bones on the mat though as you reach as far as you can. All right, last one, we'll come back to center. Nice tall spine. Inhale the hands overhead. And then exhale, twist to the right. Left hand, right knee, right hand leans behind you. With an inhale, reach your crown higher towards the ceiling. With an exhale, bring the chin towards the right shoulder. And then we're going to take our chin over to the left shoulder. Keep the arms where they are, getting into that right side neck. Keep turning the chin to the left. Sit up nice and tall with the spine. And we'll release back to center. With an inhale, let the hands come overhead. And exhale, twist to the left. Right hand, left knee. We'll start by twisting the chin to the left. Our usual seated stretch or twist, but then we'll bring our chin over towards the right shoulder, breathe into that left side neck, sit up nice and tall. Reach with the chin. All right, release back to center. Nice job. We'll roll over the knees, come to the tabletop position. Take your cat cows, warming up that spine. Inhale, drop those low ribs down, and gaze goes up. Exhale, arch the spine. Let the head be happy. Invite any little movements here that feel nice and natural. You can even close the eyes for a couple breaths. It's whatever's coming up. Whatever feels nice. Bring the hands a little wider, sticking with this spine, but we're going to add lateral movements. So take hip circles, drop those hips down to the side. Job. Come back to tabletop position and we'll tuck our toes with the hips down and off. So the hips back, so the heels down to here. Pedal up the feet, first down and off with class. Find the down dog. So spread the fingertips, they're all the fingers wide. Roll the armpits in to face each other a little bit. And before you try to straighten the legs in down dog, Bend the knees and then see if you can sink the hips a little farther back on the farther back of the mat. And then turn straight into your knees last, shooting the heels to the earth, keeping that tailbone tucked back and your lower ribs pulled in. All right, we're going to walk our hands back all the way to the open squat. So keep those. Hold those toes nice and wide, and then sink the hips back in between the heels. Sit up nice and tall. Yeah, you can have a block. You can move those feet wider or narrow, however feels nice. Opening the ankles and the hips in the back. Sit up nice and tall. Maybe press those palms together one more time. This is good for the counter of the down dog. And then we'll get into the shoulders a little bit. So we're going to start with our right hand, sweeping over to the right, kind of pressing against that right knee. And inhale, the left hand goes up to the sky. We're moving all the way to a bind, opening right shoulder. Let your left hand go to the low back. 
right hand reaches to the low back. If you have a bind with the fingers and maybe even your shirt, you're grabbing your shirt with both hands, you need to open that chest to the side. Core is still engaged, keep the spine long. And release, come back to center. Do you feel like kind of on the outside of that shoulder? All right, the left side. So sweep the hand over to the left. Pressing out that left knee a little bit and inhale, open the right arm. So kind of just opening to the sky. This can be your pose today. Or taking that bind, reaching both hands towards that left hip on the low back side. If you have the bind, try to open the chest. Maybe the gaze goes to the right. Nice. Breathing as well. And release, nice job. We'll come back to center. And then we're gonna roll onto our backs. Warm up the core a little bit. So while we're on our backs, so the entire length of the spine on the mat, we're gonna come to pigeon, or not pigeon, sorry. Eagle arms and eagle legs. So we'll take right arm under left arm and right leg on top of left leg. Keep the spine on the mat. That's the tricky part. On an exhale, knees and elbows touch. And inhale, find length. Now you only go as open as you low back the lift off the mat. Exhale, crunch. Inhale, find length. Bringing awareness to the elbow back as the core is working so hard to protect it. Use that breath, it will help. The slower you go, the harder it will be. And release. Practice the arms, drop the feet, windshield wipe the knees side to side. Now we'll come back to center. Eagle pose with the left arm on bottom and left knee on the top. So wrap yourself as much as you can. And exhale, knee to elbow, crunch, and inhale, find length. Use your breath. Feel that core warming up. Heels might touch the mat, but still be careful with that low back. The entire core is working. Couple more. It's a great cold warm up. And then the last one, crunch it up, release, cactus those arms, press the heels to the mat, and we shall wipe the knees side to side. So you feel nice to open those hips. And then we'll bring the knees to the chest, give yourself a little hug, grab your arms around the shins, gently rock side to side. And then we'll come to a happy baby. Open those hips nice and wide. Press your knees towards the mat. As you grab the outsides of the feet, press your knees towards the mat. That's the goal. Nice job. Get around with that happy baby. Maybe straighten some of the legs a little bit. And then we'll come to center with the legs. Grab behind the thighs. We're going to rock and roll along the spine a few times. So giving yourself a little massage. And then we're going all the way to stand. So get some momentum, lean forward, press through those heels. Come all the way to your mountain pose. Let's just shake it out here, rock side to side, little spinal twist. Maybe a heel pops off the ground. Come back to that mountain pose. So bring those feet back under the hips. We're gonna grab the hands behind us, pull the shoulders apart to open the heart space, bend the knees, and then exhale forward fold. Gently letting the hands come overhead. And the belly kind of hangs out on the thighs. Release your head, shake off that head a little bit. Continue to let gravity help your hands fall towards the mat. Big shoulder opener, and then again, release a little more out of that neck space. Don't hold up the head. Nice 
Release the hands, inhale, hop, lift, shine the chest forward. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, plank pose, full plank. So this is a nice, strong plank position. Tuck that tailbone back. So if you have a tail, you're like tucking it under almost like a scared puppy would. So tuck that tailbone back nice and strong in the core. And we're gonna drop hips to the right, drop hips to the left. Drop hips to the right. Feel those obliques, feel the whole body working here. Lots of plank pose in our transitions. Drop to the knees at any time and keep going. A couple more. All right, back to center, drop the knees, drop the chest and chin, eight point pose. Keep that natural C curve in the spine. And then release, release the legs long. Press the feet into the mat. Inhale, cobra pose. Use that low back, hands off the mat if you can. Exhale, release. We'll do one more, so stay here. Inhale, press through the feet. Lift the chest, cobra pose. This time, maybe coming to speaks. Press the forearms into the mat. Use this to pull you forward and push you up. Shoulders out of the ears. Deeper back bend. And exhale, press those hands under the shoulders, back to a child's pose. Find length in the spine, letting those hips sink back towards the heels. Return to that ujjayi breathing. And then we'll come back to our tabletop. Let's open up the hip a little bit. Take your right knee out to the side with the hip circles both directions. So flex your right knee forward, to, your toes forward to protect the knee. And then send the right leg back, heel pressing to the back of the room. Tuck your left toes, three-legged down dog, lift all the way back to down dog. And then bend your right knee and let the foot fall in the air over to the right. Not going to look your dog, just looking under your left arm and trying to find your right foot. Big dip over. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Give it a tap. Inhale, lift the leg. Second exhale, knee to chest, pull nice and high. Inhale, lift the leg. Through an exhale, go across the body, left elbow or armpit. Give it a tap. Inhale, lift. And then we come to low lunge. Bring your foot to between the hands, drop that right. There's left knee. We'll take like at least five good deep breaths in low lunge, opening up this left hip flexor. So your low lunge can be hands down on your mat, or maybe it's more comfortable to be lifted. You just want to feel that left side. Use your breath, relax your shoulders, relax everything more than just that left hip. And then exhale, send it back for half split, straight into the right leg. Flex those toes back. It's a little bit of a balancing act here. So if you have a block under one of the hands, I find that helpful. If you're feeling it too much in the low back, come out of it, keep your chest lifted. Inhale, find some length. And then exhale, fold, just so you feel it in the back of that right leg. Release, come forward to high lunge. So picking up that back knee, sweep the hands forward. Deep bend in the front knee here. And then bring awareness to that left knee, pull it up into the leg a little bit more. Basically feeling just with that low lunge belt, nice big hip opener. Okay, we're gonna exhale, so make sure you the right. We're gonna exhale, twist to the right. So right arm is back, left arm is forward. Try to let your gaze go over to the right. Keep that high lunge legs. And then easy twist, left arm falls to the inside of the right leg, right hand stays up. Okay. 
Drop your right hand and send your right foot back to meet left. Take it through your first chaturanga vinyasa. Or meet us in down dog. However you want to get there, it could be tabletop, child's pose, down dog. Follow me, down dog. Okay, drop down to the knees. We'll do the other side. So on tabletop, or from tabletop, take left knee out 90 degrees, get into that hip. It's a little bit of a glute workout here. You can feel them squeezing to keep that left leg lifted. And then send the heel back. So straight into that left leg the best you can. Tuck right toes. Exhale, lift the hips, three leg it down, dog. Other side, strong through those hands, strong through those shoulders. Bend left knee, let the foot drop in the air over to the right. Try to look over your right arm a bit. Maybe you'll see your foot tilt a little bit. Keep your shoulders square to the mat. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Tap and inhale, find length with the foot. Second exhale, knee the chest, foot nice and tight. Inhale, lift. Third exhale, cross the body, maybe all the way up to that armpit. Woo. Inhale, lift. Exhale, drop the foot, low lunge, drop back knee. A little bit of a longer hold. We want to get into opening that hip flexor. So come into your low lunge. However, and if you one thing that always works is both side of the back. Is backing out a little bit and then instead of focusing on the hip flexor, focus on your core. So squeeze your abs in. If anything, it tilts your pelvis forward, tailbone down. And when you pull that core in, it creates a big stretch in the hip flexor. So try to kind of keep that the whole time, core engaged. Last exhale here, and then send it back, half splits, left side, straight into left leg. Pull those toes up towards the face. So you might want to walk the heel a little bit further forward. That helps with the stretch. Jenny's, Jenny's pose is another option. Full splits even is an option here. All right, so we come through forward up to high lunge, pick up that back knee, sweep those hands forward, deep bend in the front knee, settle down, relax the shoulders out of the ears, strong high lunge, and then exhale, twist left, left arm goes back, right hand goes forward. Keep reaching, gaze goes over to the left, exhale, easy twist, right hand pops down to the floor, middle of or in the inside of left foot, left hand lifts. Feel that twist, feel the legs working. Drop the left hand, step back, take it through your chaturanga vinyasa. So you can go all the way to the belly and cobra through tabletop to down dog. Or if you're doing an up dog, you wanna keep those thighs off the mat here. So this is a difference up dog to down dog. Bend the knees, look at the space between the arms on the bottom of the exhale, walk super off to the front of your mat. When you get there, inhale, half lift, shine the heart forward. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands to the heart center, down by the side. Bring the big toes to touch for chair pose. Have some space between the heels here. But the big toes are touching however it feels nice for you. Bend the knees, sweep the hands forward, chair pose. Sink a little bit deeper, bring that core in. Sink a little bit deeper, reach the hands up. Exhale, twist to the right, left elbow on the outside of the right knee, press those hands together. Try to keep those knees glued together, gaze goes over to the right, sink the hips a little lower. Press the palms to add the twist. Now we'll move the weight over into the right foot. Kickstand left toes. 
Stay here or lift left heel towards left glute. And then we'll all step that left foot back into that high lunge with a twist. Yes, nice transition. It's not an easy one. Inhale, high lunge. So the hands come forward. And then we fly, warrior three, pick up your back foot, reach your hands forward, ground through right foot. Squeeze your glutes together, yogi's choice for the hands. They can be our heart center for a little bit more stability. Release the hands, standing splits, keep the left foot up. Forehead drops down towards right foot. Release the head here, you don't have to hold up the head. Shake it out, lift that left heel. And pyramid pose, drop your left foot. Three to four feet behind your right foot, you'll bend that right knee to get there. Place a block under the hands to support you here. Straighten into both legs. Inhale, find some lift and length. Exhale, fold over right leg. This is a pose, this is a good pose that we kind of get stuck into a degree where we just feel like we're hanging out a lot of arch in the back. So we want to come out of this pose, lift the chest, release that stretch, lift until you find a straight spine. And then exhale, fold over the right leg again, but this time don't go as far with the spine. Let the stretch stay in the right leg. All right, we'll plant the hands at the front of the mat. Step back, take it through Chaturanga Vinyasa, or skip the knee down dog. Yogi's choice always meet us in down dog. Use your breath though. Look at the space between your hands and the mouth on the exhale. Walk super hop to the front of the mat. When you get there, inhale, hop, lift, shine the heart forward. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse, swung back all the way up to standing. And exhale, hands to the heart center. One other side. Big toes to touch, setting up your chair pose again. Other side. Bend those knees, sweep the hands forward. Chair pose. Pull that core in, low ribs stay in, hands stay up. Exhale, twist to the left this time. Same thing, other side. Find this twist, it's gonna help us when we step that foot back. Just keep those hips low and then move the weight into the left foot. Kickstand the right toes. Lift the heel towards the glute. Send the foot back, high lunge with prayer hands, twists. Beautiful transitions. Keep pressing into those palms to keep the twist. And then inhale, high lunge. You sweep those hands forward to get another transition. We fly forward, warrior three. Lift your back foot, reach your hands forward or hands at heart center for more balance. Keep reaching through left, right heel and through the crown of the head. Your long body here. Okay, standing splits, so drop those hands to the floor, keep that right foot up, release that head and head. Maybe challenge that balance here, I know that left leg being tired, but try to lift one hand off the mat to the back of the left cup. Maybe both, even just for a second. Pyramid pose, drop that left foot back. You're gonna bend it for the right foot. You're gonna bend into that left knee to get all the way into pyramid pose. You might come up, you know, some people might even come all the way to standing. When you're ready, inhale, find lift and length. And then exhale, let the forehead drop towards left shoe. Big stretch to the back of that right leg. Anytime we're forward folding like this, we're going to pull our belly up and in, kind of hollowing out that belly space. All right. Press the hands into the mat. 
Dip your left foot back to meet the right. Take it through the Chaturanga Vinyasa. Or skip it, lean down. Go. Inhale, right foot, high to the snap. Exhale, plant the foot, come up high lunge. Sweep those hands forward. Exhale, twist your hands open to the right. So left hand forward, right hand back, deep bend in that front knee. Should feel that left toe flex they're talking to you right now. Then we're gonna make it talk a little more lift left hand up and right hand to the low back or to the low left leg. Deep bend in that front knee, gaze is up. Exhale, easy twist, left hand on the inside of right foot, right hand lifts high to the sky. Stay here or side plank, lift right foot on top of left. Modification to drop bottom knee or lift top leg. Take it back to high lunge with your easy twist. And then drop left knee, we're gonna to come to a lizard pose. So you're gonna roll that right foot onto the outer edge of the right foot. You're gonna press that knee just gently away from you, maybe lowering down onto one or both forearms. You can hold lizard pose for like five, at least five deep breaths. Always protecting that back knee. You can roll your mat, double it up if you want, some extra cushion. All right, press those hands under the chest to lift back up. And then hands are going to want to be right under the shoulders. Lift your left knee, pop your right foot back to meet the left, back out. Inhale, left foot lifts high to the sky. Exhale, plant the foot, come up high, lunge, sweep those hands forward. Deep bend in the front knee. Bring that right knee up into the quad a little bit more. You're on the ball of that back foot. Exhale, twist open to the left. Try to let that hands go back, right hand reaching forward. Revolve it, left hand down, right hand up. Big side body over there. Keep that right for the left knee bent. Exhale, easy twist, right hand on the inside of left foot, left hand up. Press through right wrist and left heel. Stay here or move back to a side plank. Nice job, yogi's choice. Drop bottom knee or lift top leg. Working on transitions. So this next one, bring your knee back to the front of the mat, going back to that high lunge with easy twist. And then drop down to your lizard pose. You can drop that right knee. Transition slowly. So we're gonna kind of rotate that left hip out. Knee will go out. You can come down to one forearm or both forearms. Maybe a forearm's under a block or over a block. Notice where else you're holding that tension. Maybe in the face, the shoulders. Try to find some softness as we open this left side. Okay, we're going to gently move back to down dog. Go nice and slow, be gentle on that rebound. Let the left foot go back to meet the right. Down dog. All right, we're going to work on something that is shoulder. Little shoulder thing. <laughs> okay, I want to do some. Um, dolphins. So 
Dolphin is one of those poses you really have to be careful with the front of your shoulders if it feels like there's any like rolling ligaments or something would come out of it. But we're gonna start in down dog. And then the first time you go to dolphin, I want you to go one forearm at a time. So it'll look like this, just one forearm at a time. And then you're gonna walk your toes a little bit closer, bend the knees so you can get there, and then see the hips back so you're opening the front of the shoulders. And we're just gonna transition from down dog to dolphin for a few breaths, at least five. Working on the shoulder strength, shoulder opener. If you feel good doing one at a time, try doing both at a time. Be super mindful though of your shoulders. A couple more working on that transition. If you have trouble with the, the back of your legs, keep the knees bent. That's perfectly okay. Gaze is back between the legs for both poses. All right, nice job. Last one, we'll come to down dog. Drop the knees. Puppy pose. Walk your hands forward. Let your forehead come down to the mat. Keep your hips stacked over the knees. And feel those shoulders nice and open right now. Probably warm. You might feel like, oh, I can come into this stretch a little bit easier today. And then walk with both hands over to the right. Reach through the left fingertips. Sink the weight back into the left hip. Now your right hand can be wherever it needs to support the weight. Opening up left side body. And then hands come through center over to the left. Left hand for support, right hand reaches and then sink that weight down into the right hip. Still keeping the hips cut off the heels so the hips are more lifted. All right, nice job. Let's come to center and then lower down onto the belly. We'll do just two rounds of bow pose today. We'll go back straight in. So bow pose is where you grab your feet with your hands. And if you want a strap, I can give you a strap. Or if you don't like that grip, you can take a super mirror. So when you're ready, gaze is forward. It's always straight forward. On an inhale, lift the hips, lift the gaze. Kick into your hands as hard as you can. Really use that low back to get into the pose. Keep kicking, keep lifting. And release. Windshield wiper those knees, hands down by the face. And then come back to center and do one more. So get into your bows. And one thing I like to do too before I get into it is like grip the mat and then press myself forward because I feel like sometimes I get stuck. So it's kind of like going to that sphinx pose to lift forward and then using that to get into bow pose. When you're ready, inhale, lift and kick. Go right to where you left the first bow pose. Go right there. And then go a little deeper, kick a little harder, lift a little higher, keep kicking. Release. Oh. Yeah, hands back down to the mat. Either ear comes to the mat or chin. Bring awareness to that little back. All right, hands under the shoulders, press back to a child's pose, counter stretch. Finding length in that spine, some of those hips back. Nice deep inhales and exhales. And then we'll come through tabletop back to down dog.
one little last flow before we send it down to the mat. So find a nice stable down dog. Inhale, right foot high to the sky. Exhale, plant the foot, come up, warrior two. Left heel down on the mat, hands reach forward, left hand reaches back. Exhale, extended side angle, right elbow right. Knee, left hand reaches up and over. Keep these warrior two legs. We're gonna inhale back to reverse warrior. And then exhale, another extended side angle. This time, maybe going into that bind. Lots of shoulders today it should be pretty warm and open. So if you can get that bind, go for it. Maybe going all the way to Bird of Paradise. That was our peak pose today. So walk that left foot to the front of the mat or stay in your extended side angle. Lots of variations. If you're going to that, yes. Press harder down through that left foot. Try to stand up straight with that spine. Flex those right toes. Big shoulder opener, nice job. Bring both hands to the mat. Step back, take it through your last chaturanga, wrong vinyasa, skip the knee and down dog. One more side. Inhale, left foot pops up to the sky. Exhale, crunch the knee to the chest. Warrior two. So find that warrior two stance and then stick with it as we flow. Exhale, extend it side angle. Left elbow, left knee, right hand up, gaze towards those right fingertips. Inhale, reverse it. So right hand down the right leg, or maybe wraps around the low back, either one. Exhale, come to your variation of extended side angle. Maybe moving into a bind and popping your right foot to the front of the mat. Kickstand left toes, press the weight down into that right foot. Lift the chest, try to find length in the spine. Flex those left toes. Right. Yes. Just like the bird of paradise. All right, release everything. Plant both hands down to the mat. Drop the knees. And we're going to make our way onto our backs. If you want to grab some water, readjust yourself. So that you're facing in front of the room. It's not Shavasana yet. <laughs> but. Almost there. All right. I'm kind of getting resituated from standing to lying down. So hug those knees into the chest. Give yourself a little hug. Notice how it forces your spine to be straight on the back. That's kind of what we're going for here. Tire length of the spine is on the back. All right, we're coming to another happy baby. Grab the outsides of the insides of your feet. Rock side to side. Just noticing how much more open we are than 45 minutes ago when we did the same pose. Maybe straightening into the legs a bit, just play around with it. All right, we'll kick the heels up to the sky now, straighten into those legs. Do some ankle circles. We do a lot for us. Help support. And then Yogi's Choice. This is another pose that has lots of options. We're going to move to a shoulder stand, which can be a full expression of shoulder stand, or it can be modified, restorative, if you want to pop a block under your hips. And just keep those feet lifted. Getting some fresh blood to the heart, letting those feet drain a little bit. If you're in shoulder stand, bring your elbows together. And think about pressing your chest toward your chin. Hips want to stack over your chest. 
Lower down to cloud pose or stay near your sword shoulder stand. Cloud pose, feet trying to touch the floor. Trying to straighten into those legs. Keep trying to lift those hips up. A little bit restricted in the breathing, that's okay. Stick with it. Slowly release all the way down to the mat. Slowly letting those hips go down. One breath at a time. Use those hands to slow you down. Yeah. And now we're going into our supine twist. So bring the knees into the chest. And then drop them over to the right. Pick up those hips, moving back to the center line of your mat. Cactus that left arm. Gaze goes to the left. Bring all the awareness into your body right now, into your spine. Stick with it. Stay present. Even in these slower, slower poses. Keep that weight of the left knee over to the right. You might even add your hand onto the knee. Back to the center. Find your neutral spine. So you might have to wiggle those hips back onto the center line of your mat. Find neutral. Notice the spine. And then bring knees to the chest and let them drop over to the left. Pick up those hips, bring them back to the center line so right hip is stacked on top of the left. but I wanted to end with the Sutta Baddha Konasana today. So it's a supine butterfly pose and you bring it, we might sit up to start to get into it. Um, you bring the insides of the feet together and then the blocks are for the outsides of the knees. And then lay back down on that spine nice and gently. And if you don't need the blocks, that's fine, but it does help. We're gonna hold this pose for a little bit longer today, more restorative yin, opening those hips. So you're gonna find a spot that you think you can hold for about two minutes. You want a neutral spine. You don't want the bottom of the spine lifting off the mat. And then you can even take left hand to heart, right hand to belly here, kind of using this to transition into Shavasana. Sticking with the body, listening to those hips.
You are welcome to stay here or gently use the hands to lift the knees back together. And in this phase at this time, take any little movements that your body needs for moving back into stillness. So maybe just a little reach to wipe your nose hips. After that, assume to bottom kamasana. Maybe you check in on that low back, maybe bring those knees back to the chest. Setting up for our final pose of class, Shavasana. We'll let those legs go long. Toes roll out to the side. Just kind of letting the whole body be. Just kind of just wait on the mat. No effort. Just be. And for the next few minutes, I invite you to be the observer. If you notice those thoughts, try to step back to that higher seat of awareness. And just be the observer. into the body by wiggling fingers and toes. 
and waking up the rest of the body. With your hands overhead. Inhale to stretch. And then exhale, roll over onto your favorite side, using your arm as a pillow. Bring those knees out of a little fetal position. And then gently pressing out to a comfortable seated or end sitting cross legged. Now down through those sit bones, tall through your spine, hands on the knees, gentle bow of the head. Close the eyes if that's comfortable. Last inhale together, reach the hands over them. And exhale the thumbs down to your third eye center. Thank you for joining me on this Wednesday. It's a holiday, so send some peace and love to all those beds out there. The light of me sees an arm to light me. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Indira and Anton. And